and Justin here. Today we're going to start a new series on guitar tone. Probably every day I get at least a hundred comments across my different videos saying, how did you get this sound? How do you do that? And it's not really like I can give somebody the exact settings because every guitar and every amp and every different effects box and everything is different. So you need to learn how to use your own gear. That's it's a really, really important thing. Now, this particular lesson is going to be focused on the guitar, how we get different sounds out of the guitar, what the knobs do, what the effects are of the different components of the instrument. But it's also worth remembering that most of the sound comes from the amp. Uh, that's maybe a slight exaggeration, but if you have like an amazing guitar plugged into a really crappy amp, it's going to sound really bad. Whereas if you have a pretty cheap guitar plugged into a really great amp, it's going to sound really good. So when you're thinking about where to put your money, as far as tone goes, you probably want to be leaning toward thinking about putting more money into the amp. However, the guitar is what we feel. So for me, a guitar always has to feel best. That's the, like the most important element, more than what it sounds like, because you can change the sound a lot by having different strings, different pickups. So that, that Those components can change the sound drastically. But what doesn't change or is harder to change is the feeling of the guitar. So... For me, when I'm trying a guitar, the first thing that I always think about is the feeling of it. How does it feel for me? Is it, is it the right one? And I've got to like it as well. I've got to like what it looks like, what it feels like. How does it fit in my body? All of that sort of stuff is really important. So always bear that in mind uh, when you're looking at choosing a guitar. Now this one, to get more specifically now, once you've got your guitar, what are the different things you can do to control the sound? Uh, and we're going to start with a, a quick chat about strings. I was always under the impression that thicker strings sounded fatter and fuller and bigger. Uh, the potentially false science behind what I was thinking was that if the strings are thicker and they're vibrating, they're going to change the magnetic fields in the pickups more, and therefore you kind of get more sound coming out of the instrument. Now, I thought that for a long time, but it appears that uh, it might have been misguided uh, I've lately been playing an SG, which you can maybe see in the background, which has eight on it, which is like crazy thin and it sounds massive. Now, I got that from uh, a guy, Solo Dallas, uh, who's an ACDC fanatic and apparently Angus uses ultralight strings. ZZ Top, there's actually a load of people with incredible guitar tone that have very thin strings as well. So my opinion now has swung from, I like to use, I, I'm using tens on this guitar, which is my most common gauge uh, that I use. But I think you should experiment and see what feels good. Because for me, sometimes I actually like having to work it a bit. I find nines or eights a bit too easy, which is sometimes good. Like doing a big bend, bend with vibrato, uh, you know, which is still part of the tone journey, right? Uh, is how you play and what it sounds like. You can do that a lot easier on eights, but you don't have to work for it much. Whereas on this guitar with tens on it, you have to work for it a bit more. If you're going to go Stevie Ray Vaughan and put 13 gauge strings on, then you really have to work for it. So I think that there's some sort of connection there between the amount of effort that you put in in into how it feels and therefore the sound is affected by that as well. So uh, strings do make a difference on the tone. Uh, I've used loads and loads of different strings these days. I'm using Diodario NYXLs. But again, you should just experiment and try a whole bunch of different strings because different strings with different guitars sound different, particularly on acoustic guitar, which we're not talking about specifically today. But uh, every one of my acoustic guitars has a different type of string on it because I go through and I try all of the different types, whether it's phosphor bronze or 8020 or what, you know, the, the, the different styles of strings and different brands to see which is the one that's going to work best with that particular instrument. It does make a difference, something to experiment with. I'd encourage you to have a bit of a play around. So... That's strings out of the way. Now, the strings 
the vibration to the strings picked up by pickups funnily enough now this particular guitar i have uh three different types of pickups which has made it a good choice for this video uh, i have a humbucker but it's a what's called a splittable humbucker so this can actually sound like a single coil pickup as well this middle one is a, a classic kind of strat style uh, single coil pickup so the humbucker is essentially two single coils stuck together when you get two together they buck the hum single coil pickups can be quite noisy now i've just i'm going to be using my kemper profiler for this whole lesson uh and i'm not able to make it really noisy if i plug into an amp you'll definitely get a, a single coil has a lot of noise attached to it and a humbucker doesn't so there was a kind of practical reason for using a humbucking pickup but they sound very different too they sound very fat and full um now normally on a stratocaster you'd have three single coils like a regular fender stratocaster from the 60s or 70s or whatever uh having a humbucker and a single and a single an hss configuration is quite common particularly in kind of rock stuff and in more contemporary guitars i've stuck a thing called a filtertron pickup which is more commonly found in kind of gretsch guitars in the front um just to have a different sound uh, uh, you know available uh you're going to hear this this guitar is pretty versatile most guitars are so i'm not i don't want you to be under the impression that this particular one is more versatile than any other one i've got it set up in a way to do that but you will find almost any guitar if you learn about what the pickups are doing and the way to manipulate the volume and the tone you you will have a whole load of different sounds available in there but the pickups do make a difference uh, these particular pickups, I should mention, are uh, made by Radio Shop, great company uh, in Wales. They hand wind all of their pickups, really cool. Uh, they're not a budget pickup, that's for certain, but it's one of those upgrades that really can make a, a pretty massive difference. If you've got a kind of mid-level uh, guitar, then you might find uh, popping in some really nice pickups will make a difference. Uh, again, it's a good idea to try it. It's a little bit more flapping around than just taking strings off. You've got to pull pickups out and resolder them or whatever. So, uh, might be worth doing a little bit of research on that but uh, that's the different types of pickups generally speaking well when you get like a gibson guitar like this one most gibsons have two humbuckers in it there there were different types they had there were there are there are other options as path pickups and uh but most commonly would be having these uh two humbucking pickups and we'll talk about the sound in this guitar in a little bit as well let me just lean, make sure that is leaned up nicely and is not going to fall over because that would be a disaster so what's also important actually is to do with the pickups is the position of the pickups sound very different now uh, i'm going to go through now and just show you and explain what the sound is of these different pickups so you can hear the difference because i think again i'm showing you on this guitar but you need to be doing it on your own guitar and uh, take what i'm saying here and then try it on your own instrument and see what the effect is of the different pickups and how they how they react with each other you might have only two like in a gibson guitar some guitars have only got one my malcolm young gretch up there in the background which you can see yeah uh, just behind me there uh, only has one pickup so that one's a little bit simpler in when it comes to choosing what pickup to use but uh you want to get used to it you want to you want to experiment with your own gear to find out what's happening so let's start with the front pickup now this is a filter tron so it's slightly fatter sounding than a, a regular single coil a little bit more breaks up a little easier uh, but you'll hear it's still quite round so i've got all of the, the knobs up here i explain what the knobs do on my guitar because it's set up slightly different but uh now, I'm just going to flick it back to this one, the bridge. I'll put it on my humbucker as well, just so you can hear the big difference. You hear it's very bright. If we go to the front. It's a lot rounder sound. Okay, this has got a lot more, the, the humbucker has a lot more kind of bite, or r rather the bridge. It's not necessarily about being a humbucker. In fact, I can stick this into single coil mode. It's this one. And here it's very round. It's sometimes nice for the kind of your Hendrix. As opposed to. So the, the front pickup, a lot rounder sounding. If I go straight to the middle now, which is. Uh, the middle position of the pickup selector, the middle pickup. This one's a little bit kind of honkier. Again, comparison. Front, middle. 
Hamburger. So you can hear again, it's a very different sound there between the front and the middle. And now we're on the back pickup. The way I have mine set up, some people have like a little switch uh, somewhere around here to, that splits the humbucker uh, between a, or, or a, a splittable humbucker between the single coil sound and the humbucker sound. I have it on a tone control here. So when I wind it one way, uh, this will be a single coil sound. And when I wind it up the other way, I get the humbucker so I can actually blend it and not have like one or the other I can have halfway in between it's a great little mod uh, suggested by my friend Tom who built this guitar for me uh, great guitar is definitely worth a look as well you can hear the single coil is a little bit kind of thinner sounding but it can be in a very pleasing way <laughs> Definitely with distortion, uh, for me, a humbucker just has that, seems to bring in some extra uh, harmonics, I guess they are. Just It seems to make the sound fatter and fuller and, uh, yeah, definitely better for rock stuff in humbucker mode. And the single coils are a little bit kind of, they've got a bit more sparkle to them, I guess. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you can hear it again with chords. <laughs> It's missing some of that. It's kind of grates a little bit more. It's breaking up. It is a little louder as well, actually. So just physically different, like volume-wise. And that, again, would drive the amplifier a little different. If the amplifier is getting a bit more juice, it'll, it'll break up a little bit more, get a bit more distorted. So that's probably impacting here as well. So that leads me nicely on to the importance of the volume control. Now, when you've got a, any sort of distortion going on, when you back the volume off, it cleans up the sound. Okay, so a really nice thing to be able to do is to, to feel where you've got this it's distortion, that's the humbuck of volume full. If I go down to about volume four, it's a lot. I'm playing a bit softer too. You can hear that the, the amount of uh, volume that you're sending to the amplifier changes how the amplifier reacts. So uh, very often, if you've got a bit too much gain, you don't need to be running around to change a setting on your amplifier. You literally just turn, turn your volume down a bit. It's a bit too much. Okay, so that kind of makes a, a, a bit of a difference, just being able to clean up with the volume. Now, I'm kind of jumping around a bit here because I'm trying to lead you through different tones and different things that we can find in the guitar. When I talked about pickups before, I talked about them individually. And this is a five-way selector switch. So the front one, position one, is just that pickup. When I flick it back just one step, it's actually these two pickups. So the front one and the middle one. Then it's just the middle one. Then it's the middle one and the back one. And then just the back one. So... Particularly for clean sounds for me, I'd, I'd very rarely use position two or four, these combination ones, uh, for lead guitar. They just, they don't seem to work for me. You might, you should experiment with it and see. It might work great for you. It doesn't work so much for me, but it works really well for rhythm guitar, particularly cleany sort of sounds. Um, now, I'm putting this into single coil mode as well because it helps clean it up. But you can hear, you know, not long ago I had this. But by flicking it into position four, single coil mode, back the volume down, got a pretty clean sound. Still a little crunchy. But it's very, very different. So again, by manipulating the sound on the guitar, you can change things considerably. And it's one of those things that I think you should be aware of when you're trying to work out a song as well, is don't always just grab to the amplifier to turn the tone down a bit or whatever. Just experiment with a bit with the guitar. Um, 
you know, this particular sound that I'm using on the Kemper uh, uh, profile by Michael Britt called the Fender Deluxe 6, or Lux 6, I think it actually is its proper name. Uh, I use that for loads and loads of stuff, and I'm mostly just manipulating things on the on the guitar. Sometimes I, I do play with the tone, uh, the gain a little bit on this particular uh, profile just to turn it down or crank it up a little bit. But there's so much mileage you get just from that one particular, it's essentially one amp and one guitar, and just learning to manipulate them rather than feeling that you know you need loads of different presets and loads of different fancy stuff to make things work. You know? not sparkly so if I if I turn the the, the game down turn the volume back up and just go to the bridge on single coil it'll be more sparkly you can explore in you can and should experiment with that and we'll get more into that when we start talking more about the actual amp settings and what we can do there this one particularly I'm trying to focus on the tone side of the the, the guitar tone side of things so again key element here backing the volume pot off to get in order to get a little bit more of a clean sound so we've talked about strings we talked about pickups different pickup types uh, pickup selectors uh, backing the volume off but there's another knob here which is pretty important the tone knob now tone is how much treble or bite your sound has got basically so uh, here's a G with the tone on full <laughs> And here it is with it wound all of the way off, just so you can hear how different it is. Right. Full. Off. Or one. It sounds a little, when the, the, the tone is right back, which I must say you very rarely use it like that, but when the tone's right back, it's almost like somebody's playing next to you. Like in the next room, I mean, your neighbor is really pissing you off by playing power chords at two in the morning. And then you open the door. It sounds like that. And you say, shut up, man. And then you close the door again. It's that kind of thing. A lot of the treble, the bitey sound is, is, is gone. Um, it doesn't need to be on or off. You might just find that sometimes you need to back it off a bit. And you often find most guitars have like a sweet spot as well where within the tone control where it starts to become really active or not. So uh, definitely worth having a bit of an experiment with the old tone control to get used to what it's... It, again, it's about learning what your particular instrument does, how it reacts to uh, the changes in on the controls on the guitar so that when you're trying to copy a sound off a particular record or trying to you know get a sound out that you can imagine in your musical mind uh, that you want to make your guitar sound like that then you know kind of roughly what you can do just with the instrument and how it works um one of the tricks with the tone control which i don't do but uh, and and uh, uh maybe i should is backing the tone off to like six or seven and then turning the treble up on the amp uh, and that way you end up with the same sound, but then you can boost your treble by turning the tone up. I would recommend that by default that you leave your tone control on 10 all the time. Do experiment with changing it, but that would be your general default thing. Like if I'm doing a workshop and someone gets up to play, first thing I do is volume on 10, tone on 10, tone on 10 if there's two tone controls. Just make sure that that's a kind of a good default setting. You definitely should learn to experiment with all of those things, but as a, as a general setting, that's probably where you want to start. Okay, let's just have a little look at the Gibson as well now. Uh, I'm just going to go rogue and just rip the guitar out rather than that. And it's probably going to need a tune as well. Uh, so there might be a little pause in a second while I go through and give it a tune. See, first thing I'm doing is just grabbing the guitar and checking all of the controls are up full. Uh, just because that's, you know, like I said, the good default. Yeah, definitely needs a tune. So just get down with me for one second. I haven't been using this one a whole lot. Got to feel so different feeling these super light strings as well. Having just gone from tens now to eights, it feels really weird i will talk about that more in a second should probably do a whole thing on strings actually but uh one of the things that with the thinner strings is you have to be a lot more kind of aware of how hard you press because if you press a little bit too hard with your fingers you can make it sound like it's going out of tune it's one of the reasons that i'm 
experimenting with these really thin strings is to try and get myself uh, trying to get myself more in tune with how hard I'm pressing on the strings but whoa managed to tune that semitone low you'd think by now I'd know how to tune a guitar wouldn't you ah yeah okay that's what it's all about so this is uh, the bridge humbucker up flat out <laughs> so big and fat I love this guitar but you can hear there's no tone suffering here by using eights right I'm not going like oh my sound is really thin that hasn't happened right so... yeah it's big now on Gibson guitars you tend to have just two uh, pickups two volumes one for each pickup and two tone controls one for each pickup so the idea would be that you could have a, a rhythm sound say on the front you could back your volume back yeah, you know. Flick it down. You can hear straight away this big difference. Clean sound. Big dirty sound. So that's the whole idea here with having these uh, completely two different systems uh, that are a bit independent of each other. It's, it's kind of cool being able to flip between them. You can also, of course, go in the middle, which is both the pickup. And then you've got two volume controls, which are kind of interactive. So... be honest I don't think I've ever used the middle pickup thing on a on a Gibson type guitar ever uh, it's always one or the other that's actually full on I mean this is a way higher output pickup than this one this one is a quieter pickup it's, it's got a, a lot cleaner sound you hear it straight away which is useful and again I wouldn't want two pickups that sounded essentially the same but one was a little rounder I want variance in my pickups when I'm you know trying to figure out what so sounds I want to get out of an instrument this one I got mostly for just like playing ACDC stuff because I, I just find that really great fun it's kind of recreation for me I guess uh, and yeah so the, the principles are the same again uh, you've got a tone control there <laughs> Yeah, how gnarly does that sound? Just funny. Something's gone a little bit pear Ah, uh, there it is. Thinner string has slipped out of its little housing there. Anyway. I don't think I've ever used that on this particular guitar. What a cool sound. The other cool thing, that little trick that I use quite often with Gibson guitars is rolling the front one, if, which I don't tend to use as much as the off switch. So now I've got my, because this pickup is off, got no sound, I can just flick it down to get a big sound. If I go to the middle, it's off as well. Get a bit of that kill switch action. Really. 
If you want to get fancy tricks and get a bit of Rage Against the Machine and some Tom Morello things. Yeah, I, to, you know, on a stage situation, rather than having to run over and mute something or turn the volume down, if you're not using that front, front pickup, you can back it off to zero. On, off, and then we're sorted. Uh, so, what else have I missed? Let me just have a check on my little list here. Oh, the push-pull thing. So there's one other thing I was going to explain. Let me just pop this guitar down over here on the floor and grab this one. I'll just explain this other thing, which... I don't really have, uh, it's got a push-pull pot and it's uh, here on this tone control, if I press it, pops up. Now, this would be most commonly that you'd use that to split the humbucker, right? So you'd have two functioning con tone controls regularly. For me, I've just got the one tone control, like I said, that my lower tone control is the blend of the humbucker. But you could have two regular tone controls and then uh, this one would split the humbucker. Now, I have it set up that when I open it like when I press it down this pickup is active as well so if I if I put myself on position four with this up all three of the pickups work at the same time but I've got to be honest I never used it and next time this goes in for a service with Tom I'm going to get that functionality taken out because I just don't need it and I don't see the point of having stuff in here that I don't actually use but uh, I think it's worth being aware of this you can either have the push pull thing or you can have a little often there's a little toggle switch there um, some of the modern guitars like Paul Reed Smith guitars have a what's called a piezo pickup under the bridge as well which is like a thing that you use to record acoustic guitars so you might have even more toggles for that so you can go pretty crazy with the toggle switches uh, my old red strat that you might see on some of my uh, videos has a, a, a switch for the splittable humbucker on it. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a kind of a common thing to have this in an HSS uh, style guitar, humbucker single coil, single coil uh, thing. That would be a common one. I don't think I've ever seen... There must be, you know, Gibson style guitars that have uh, splittable humbuckers in it. I haven't got any, but uh, they must exist. Uh, really important part of this thing is you figuring out what's good on your instrument. But also it's a good idea to go to a regular store, you know, your local store, and try out a bunch of different guitars, especially if you're in the market for buying a new one, which let's face it, aren't we all all of the time? Uh, I would definitely recommend just having a day where you muck around with all of the different pickup types and see what the different sounds are. Generally speaking, I'd recommend doing it all in the same amp. So pick an amp, maybe the same as the amp that you've got at home. When you go to the guitar store and just try on all of the different guitars so you can hear how the different output, for example, like high output pickups that distort really easy, sound very different to low output pickups, which have a, you know, they just don't have the the kick but high output isn't always good depends on what it is that you want to play so you need to find the ones that fit with the sounds that you hear in your head and the styles that you want to play uh it can be a good idea as well to maybe check out the guitars of the people who you really like so going like hey well neil young always uses a, a gibson les paul so let's use one of those or angus uses an sg or you know th th think about it a bit that way and then try those particular guitars and see how they feel like i said the the way that it feels really important for the guitar as much as the tone uh, but I feel like that's a pretty comprehensive look at the knobs and switches and stuff on the guitar. I hope you'll join me for the rest of the journey. We're going to go through amps and amp settings and guitar effects and how you use them and how to build a pedal board and all of that sort of stuff is going to be coming up in this series. Uh, there'll be plenty more information over on the website as well, so do go and check that out. There'll be little diagrams to show you about the pickup selectors and as well anything else that I've forgotten that I, when I edit the video, go, oh man, I should have mentioned that. You'll find that all of that stuff over on the website. If you haven't been over in a while, do go and check it out. There is tons of amazing stuff going on over there. There. at the moment i've got a really cool team helping me out now so it's growing exponentially hope you're having a fantastic day and i'll see you for plenty more very soon you'll take care of yourselves bye bye